guys, it's Michelle, and today y'all are in for a treat. I'm about to explain to you what real Chinese food is. As you know, I've been in China for almost two months now, and also if you couldn't tell, I am Chinese American. The food that I eat in my house and the food that I've eaten in China is pretty different from the food that most Westerners and, you know, anybody actually that's not from China thinks of when they think of Chinese food. Chinese food restaurants are literally everywhere, from countries in the West to countries in Latin America to Africa, I've literally seen them no matter where I've traveled. All these places outside of China tend to offer more simplified Chinese food that are a bit modified to the taste of people of that country. Those standard dishes I'm talking about that they put a twist on are usually things like fried rice, stirred fried noodles, etc. Stuff that's pretty easy to make. Now, I'm not saying those things aren't real Chinese food. I'm just saying that it is the very, very, very tip of the iceberg and barely scratches the surface of this super intense, deep, complex culinary culture that is Chinese food. First off, I want to quickly explain two things that are very important to know. The first is that everybody in this country is a foodie. Everybody is obsessed with trying new foods, inventing new recipes and dishes, treating themselves gastronomically when they go to new places. The variety of different meats and vegetables that people eat in China are also much, much, much bigger than in the West. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of different roots, different leafy greens, different melons and squashes, vegetables I don't even know the names of in English because they do not exist in US culinary culture. Same goes with meats. I'm not so much talking about different types of meats, because the most commonly eaten meats here are pretty much the same as the US, so beef, chicken, lamb, pork, the Chinese people especially, especially love pork. What I'm talking about is the variety of parts of the animal. People here want to eat the intestines, they want to eat the feet, they want to eat the meat on the neck of the chicken, they want to eat fish tail, fish head. That being said, Chinese people are also a bit more open-minded when it comes to the different types of animals they eat as well. Though we don't eat it on an everyday basis, bullfrog is definitely popular here in Shanghai. Deep fried bullfrog is especially good. And there's also duck, goose, pigeon. And to address the elephant in the room, no, we do not eat dog. Of course, all stereotypes are rooted in some bit of truth. So yes, in this one city in the Sichuan province called Chongqing, and in a couple small rural areas in the northeast provinces near Korea, they also eat dog. But compared to the massive, massive diversity of everything that is Chinese food, it is such a small, irrelevant part that does not apply to the large, large majority of Chinese people and what we eat. The second thing I wanted to mention is that each province has its own distinct style of food. Even each city, down to the smallest city slash town, have some specialty dish. So understandably, even very, very few Chinese people have experienced the whole spectrum of what is Chinese food. Woo! Okay, so now I'm going to be showing you guys specific examples of all this stuff I've been blabbering about for a few minutes now. So first off, we're going to start with the experience of eating out in China. Eating is a very celebratory experience. So an example of a time that I went out for a special event was my uncle's company outing in Hefei. As you can see, it's family style, so there are various dishes on this wheel in the middle that you can spin. The men are all drinking liquor, usually rice wine while eating. Some of them are smoking as well. I shit you not, at every fancy dinner, there will inevitably be that 50 year old man getting lit off rice wine super red in the face yelling something at somebody. Table manners are not a thing, it's more about having a good time and enjoying yourself and letting loose. So for this meal specifically we have the local cuisine of Anhui which is the province that Hefei is in. This includes spicy pig feet, that dome of crispy rice with sauce over it that you can see in the corner. The crispy rice is basically made when you press rice to the bottom of a wok, but the sauce over it is super crunchy and juicy and fantastic. There's also these little sticky pancake things that are made out of beans, then stir-fried, this okra salad, and these buns that are made out of different kind of grains that you stuff this filling into. Another time I went to this kind of celebratory event dinner was with my grandma, and it was for all the investors for this new company that does tourism for retirees. So basically it was all old people, but as you can tell, they were still super rowdy and toasting to one another and having a good time. This dinner took place in Tianmuhu, which is a lake about an hour drive away from Shanghai. So their specialties involved a lot of seafood, such as this fish skin salad, this fish jello, and next to it is this mushroom called muar, which is probably the most popular their mushroom eaten in China, but really not common in the US. Different steamed roots and corn. I'm pretty sure the thing next to it is stir-fried intestine, lotus root, cold-cut pig ear, 
some green vegetable that I don't really know the translation to. Once again, my whole point about the biodiversity in Chinese food. Jellyfish, pumpkin, black sticky rice is a specialty of this region. And here's the crispy rice dome again, but this time with saucy meat vegetable stir fry underneath it instead of a sauce above it. This sweet egg yolk bun that was super good. And the grand finale is the lake's most famous dish that was actually invented there, which is this fish head soup. Also two other dishes that weren't part of either of those meals that I thought you guys would want to see as well is this goose foot, which is a delicacy that we had during my family reunion. If you're wondering, the texture is kind of gooey and sticky, it's pretty good. And also this massive meatball, which is the famous specialty dish of Yangzhou. Inside there's egg yolk, and there's also this thing called ground chestnut in the meatball, which is basically this root that looks kind of like a chestnut. Once again, not a vegetable that's eaten in the West. Pretty sure ground chestnut's not even the correct translation for it, but that's the direct translation from Chinese to English. So everything you guys saw is really bougie, bougie, celebratory eating out Chinese food. It's definitely not something that we eat every day. I'm very lucky in that because I don't often come back to China, when I do, I get to experience quite a few of these nice dinners because my relatives are very happy to have me back. That's definitely not the Chinese food I eat most of the time, and if you're on a budget, which normally I am. So here's a look into what eating out looks like for more regular, money-conscious occasions. A lot of people call this street food, but I consider it more of a casual restaurant. In Latin America, it would be called a comedor. But basically, as you can see, the lady's cooking stir-fried noodles right in front of you, and it's quick and simple fast food. You also have the type of fast food, which is kind of like comida corrida or menu del día in Peru. Basically, they'll make five or six dishes that are similar to the dishes you would eat at home, and you pay a set amount, so for example, 12 RMB is what I paid for this meal, and you get rice, and you get to choose maybe three or four of the dishes they have in total. Another way to eat cheap in China is street food. So the street food for breakfast consists of a lot of things that we're familiar with in the West, largely thanks to dim sum, such as pork buns, which are called baozi, dumplings, pot stickers, and also various bing. Bing is like salty pancake, so for example, scallion pancake cake is a type of bing, but other types of bing look more like Asian flatbreads. Another common street food is jonzu, which I like to describe as Chinese tamales. Basically what they are is flavored sticky rice wrapped in a leaf with meat or a salty egg yolk and sometimes chestnuts in the middle. Another common street food in Shanghai especially is yuan xiao. As you can see from the video, it's this sticky white ball and inside they have salty fillings such as meat or vegetable and they also have sweet fillings such as sesame or red bean. Beans, by the way in China are almost always sweet. You also have this thing called gao, which is this steamed sticky white thing made out of rice flour, I'm pretty sure. And once again, the fillings are sweet beans or sesame. Another common street food in Shanghai is my absolute favorite, stinky tofu. Every stinky tofu place does it differently, but this place in Yangzhou is known for loading theirs with a bunch of toppings. It's called stinky tofu for a reason. It definitely smells very bad. If it doesn't smell bad, it's honestly not gonna taste good. <laughs> if you're not into stinky tofu though, in this region, there's also this soft, almost soupy tofu that they also put toppings on, as you can see here. This is steamed instead of fried and definitely doesn't smell as bad. On top of those things, there are also different street meats. As you can see, there's chicken feet, massive meatballs, these skewered quails skewered liver of some animal, and pig feet. Right next to the liver and intestine skewers, they also have these cute little steamed sweet buns. And of course, if you want something fruity, you can get candied hawthorn. All those things I just talked about, from street food to eating out at a fancy place to eating out at a budget place, are not things that most Chinese people eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Home-cooked meals are a completely different deal. A typical home-cooked meal consists of three or four dishes in the middle that are a combination of meats and vegetables, but typically more vegetable-heavy than it is in the West, and each person has their own bowl of rice in front of them. In my family, for lunch especially, it's very casual and a lot of the times we're eating reheated leftovers from the night before. You guys have gotten lucky though and I'm actually filming this video on a day that my uncle and aunt and cousin are coming over to my grandparents house to eat dinner. So my grandma's cooking right now and in an hour or two you guys will get to see what she made.
giving you guys a peek into what is up with the rest of that massive iceberg that is Chinese food that we normally only see the tip of when we're outside of China. Eating has been one of my favorite things to do since I got here. I've had a great time learning about Chinese culinary culture and I hope I was able to share some of that experience with you guys today. See you guys next Wednesday. Thanks for all the love and support and peace out.